Hi, last time I reviewed a Zoe ZT-DQ01 LCR meter from Zotac, and as I mentioned, they also sent me a ZT-DQ02. So in this video, we're going to take a look at this DQ02, and we'll also do a teardown towards the end. As usual, I'll leave a product link in the video description below for those who are interested in getting one after watching this video. Anyway, as I mentioned last time, the only difference between the DQ02 and the DQ01 is that the DQ02 added the battery internal resistance measurement capability, and everything else is exactly the same as the DQ01. And let me just briefly show you that. Here is the product box that it came in, and on the back you can see we have the specs here. And here the specs are printed side by side between these two different models. Now, the specs here didn't mention the model numbers specifically. You can see one says LCR with battery test, the other just says LCR meter. As I mentioned last time, these were probably mass produced for different brands, which is quite common for Chinese electronics products. The specs for DQ02 are listed in the first column here, and you can see that everything else is actually the LCR portion. They are identical to the DQ01 to the right. The only difference is really this battery internal resistance tester portion. And you can see here, in the battery testing mode, we can measure voltage up to 100 volts. We can measure resistance between 0.1 milliohm up to 200 ohms. And the resistance measurement accuracy is at 0.5%. For voltage measurement, the accuracy is at 0.2%, which is great. Now I have the DQ01 and DQ02 side by side. You can see that these two meters are pretty much identical at a glance. The only difference you can see, at least from this angle, is what is printed on this button here. And you can see on the DQ02, it has the BAT printed on it, in addition to the LCRZ. This is a button for cycling through different test modes. And another difference between these two meters is on the top here. You can see that on the DQ02, we have a separate connector for the Kelvin clips that are used for the battery internal resistance testing. And if you look at the test leads provided, in addition to the Kelvin clips and the multimeter leads for the LCR meter, we also have this Kelvin clips for the battery tester. And these Kelvin clips are plugged into the top of the unit via this connector here. And besides this extra test leads included for the battery tester, everything else included are identical to those came with the DQ01. I wish they had added a strain relief here as the wires are directly inserted into the metal connector here, as you can see. And I'm afraid over time, the wires will be damaged right around the end of the connector here. Anyway, let's test out the battery tester feature on this ZT-DQ02. Now, I'm not going to repeat the LCR meter testing as everything should be identical to the ZT-DQ01, which I just reviewed. And I will leave a link to that video in the card up here and in the video description below. So I strongly recommend you checking it out first. I do want to power these two side by side so that you can see the boot up speed. And you can see already that the DQ01 had booted up, and of course it took a little bit longer for the DQ01. So the boot up time is quite a bit faster on the DQ02, and I suspect that it's probably because they used a faster microcontroller. Of course, given that we couldn't see the marking of the microcontroller used in the DQ01, I'm actually not that optimistic that we can see the marking of the chips used in the DQ02 either. Anyway, we'll confirm when we do the teardown later. So besides the boot up speed, everything else actually is identical. Let me actually show you the menu here. You can see that from the menu, the firmware, everything else remains the same between these two meters. Now let's change the measurement mode to battery internal resistance test. And you can clearly see that this meter is probably geared towards production assembly line testing as you can set the acceptable voltage range and the resistance range here, so that when the value of the battery or component under test falls within the predefined range, the color of the digits will change to white, and if the values are outside the predefined intervals, the color will be red, as what we're seeing here. So this greatly simplifies the pass and fail testing. I haven't changed any of the defaults yet. The voltage interval currently is between 3 volts and 4.5 volts, and the resistance interval is between 100 milliohms and 1 milliohm. So actually, let's use this setting to test a lithium ion battery, as the values should fall within the range. Let me actually first hook up the battery tester leads. You can see that the connector is keyed, and you can plug it in here. You feel the click, and it doesn't need to be twisted. You can actually pull the ring here to disconnect. And let's do it again. And you can see here, without the strain relief, you constantly bend these wires. I'm afraid over time, 
you're going to fail right here. All right, now let's take a look at this battery here. And of course, we don't have any tabs to clip on the Kelvin clips. So the measurement results will be probably off, but that's not the point here. The point is to show you the pass and fail here. So let's give that a go. I'm just going to press it on. And you can see that now we're a pass. Of course, you can also change the display speed. So let's actually change it to medium and it will be faster here. Let's do it again. You can see that. So this is the pass and fail function. Anyway, let's first use the EDC 268 voltage standard to validate the voltage readings here. Because this is a battery internal resistance tester, you should be able to measure either voltage or resistance independently. Now, I was playing around this meter before and noticed that the minimum detectable voltage in this battery internal resistance testing mode is right around 60 millivolts. Underneath that value, we can't register anything on this meter. But once we exceed that 60 millivolts, we are able to measure the voltages. And we have a resolution down to 0.1 millivolts. So let me actually demonstrate that here. And here I hooked up a UT61E plus for reference. All right, so let's do 10 millivolts. And you can see we register on the UT61E plus with no problem. But we can't register that on the DQ02. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and you can see that 50 actually it started showing, but sometimes it doesn't show. Right now it's back to 50, but now we're seeing that. So it's right around the borderline, but 60, we can definitely register that. So the minimum is 60 millivolts, and you can see we have a resolution of 0.1 millivolt. 70, 80, 90, and 100. And let's do 0.1 volt at a time. 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1 volt. The measurement result is definitely very good. And if you recall, the accuracy is specified as 0.2% in voltage measurement mode. Then now let's do 1 volt at a time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then it appears that the voltage measurement here has a 10,000 counts resolution. As you can see here, I just increased the voltage to 11 volts. And of course, now we're losing one digit here. Now let's also verify the resistance measurement with a 100 ohm precision resistor. And this is a resistor we've been using to test all the other multimeters. It's a 100 ohm 0.1% tolerance resistor. So let's give it a go. And it did take a few seconds for the reading to stabilize. But once it stabilizes, you can see that the result is pretty much spot on. And by the way, the method most battery internal resistance testers use for resistance measurement is the so-called AC conductance method. And with this method, an AC signal with a frequency of around 1 kHz and an amplitude of 1 volt is typically used. And the battery's internal resistance is modeled as a complex impedance, which includes elements of resistance, capacitance, and even inductance. This method is actually very similar to how an LCR meter measures capacitor's ESR, or equivalent series resistance. Now, of course, most of the LCR meters cannot measure components with significant DC bias, but a battery internal resistance tester has no issue handling significant voltages. And for this meter, it can measure up to 100 volts, plus or minus. And just for demonstration, here we're measuring the battery tester's output waveform on an oscilloscope. You can see that the capture waveform is a sinusoidal and is at 1 kHz, and the amplitude is roughly 1.1 volts for this specific meter. And because this is pretty much how an ESR meter works, we should be able to measure the series resistance of capacitors using a battery tester as well. So let's actually use this battery tester to measure the ESR of this 15 millifarads capacitor.
and you can see we're measuring right around 15.5 milliohms. Now I'm measuring the same capacitor using the LCR meter, and you can see the result we get is pretty much the same at 15.5, 15.6 milliohms. Now, I too want to caution you that using the LCR meter to measure capacitance, you will need to make sure that capacitors are discharged. Otherwise, you could risk damaging the LCR meter. One of the issues of a multifunction device like this is you can easily forget which clips you're using. For example, right now, we're measuring the capacitance using the LCR meter, and we're putting these leads into the banana sockets. And if you somehow forgot that you are currently in the LCR meter mode, and if you put a voltage across these leads, you are going to damage the LCR meter. And the problem here is that these leads are identical. If you are not paying attention, you could forget which leads you are currently using and which mode you are currently in. So if I were designing the LCR meter clips, I would probably put a label on each of the clips, warning the users that the maximum input voltage should be zero, or whatever the maximum tolerable input voltage is for the LCR meter. I can definitely see mishaps like this happen. Then of course, one of the advantages of using a battery internal resistance tester to test electrolytic capacitors, ESRs, is that it can perform tests while the capacitor is charged, as you can see here. Now the result is slightly different, but it's pretty close to what we had before. Then now I'm measuring the internal resistance of an LFP battery, and currently the reading is at 3.6 milliohms. So let's actually verify that using a different meter. And for the verification, we're using the HRM-10 from Fenersi. And you can see that the result essentially is exactly the same. And let's test out another battery. This one conveniently, we have these tabs on, so I think clip these Kelvin clips on, and the result will be accurate. So let's first test with the DQ02. And you can see the result is right around 36 milliohms. And now let's verify that with the HRM10. And you can see that the result is pretty much the same. And I just open it up. You can see that the battery used here is also a 2 amp hour battery. It's exactly the same as was in the DQ01. And the circuit board from a glance looks pretty much identical to what is in that meter as well. And just for comparison, here is a picture of the circuit board in the DQ01. So the main difference is really this section of the circuit board, as in DQ01 it's not populated. Here we have all the components populated, and that is for the battery internal resistance testing. The main component here is a CS1237, which is a 24-bit ADC, and this ADC chip is used for digitizing the voltage coming in from the battery tester. And because everything else is identical to the DQ01, I'm not going to spend too much time here, and I'll leave a link to that review video in the video description below for you to check out. All in all, I think this Zoe ZT DQ02 is a solid LCR meter, and the added battery internal resistance testing feature definitely makes it even more useful compared to the ZT DQ01. So I wouldn't mind spending a little extra for the DQ02 if I were buying one, as the internal resistance tester can definitely come in handy at times. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please remember to give it a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.